Hi everyone, this is a tutorial from dwpiconcepts.com. In this tutorial today, we will learn how to implement a slowly changing dimension of type 2 using data services inbuilt transforms like history preservation and table comparison. At the same time, in this example, we are going to focus on customer dimension of SCD2 and we are going to consider a change data extraction from the source or incremental loading. For the purpose of change data extraction, we are going to follow the methodology or the design practice of using a batch load control table. So, let us go into the implementation in data services. This is how our job looks like. We have an initialization script over here. We are going to initialize a few global variables. The first is the dollar sysdat which is assigned to sysdat function of data services. And this global variable will be set to the load date column of the records in our dimension table. Next, we have our dollar date from which is a global variable set to the system date, which marks the beginning or the start date of a record in the dimension table. Next, we are using a dollar date to variable which is sent to a futuristic date, say 31st of December 2050, and this will be used to mark an effective end date or a validity end date of a record in the dimension table. Next, what we discussed earlier is a batch load control table for the purpose of CDC extraction. So, this is how our batch load control table looks like. We have our batch name column, which is basically the job we are running. In this case, it will be a customer dimension. Next, we have a column called batch status, which marks the execution status of a job. It may have a status of started, failed and success. Next, we use a batch start date, which begins the extraction start date and batch end date which marks the end of the extraction from the source table. Next, we use a load date column to identify the when this record was ins inserted in the batch control table. So, on the first, we are using the dollar $CDC global variable value to extract the last day of extraction based on which we will perform the current loads data extraction from the source. So, we are using the select query as select max of the batch end date, what was the last date of extraction from the batch control table where the batch name is the customer dimension and the last execution status was success. So, for the batch of customer dimension with the batch execution status as success, what was the last date of extraction? If on the first day we are getting a null as a return, in that case we will we will uh, assign the variable to a value of 1900.0101. And so that we want to extract all the records which are greater than 1900.0101. So next we are performing a entry in the batch load control table. Over here insert into batch control table values the batch name which is the customer dimension, execution status as started during job execution. The batch start date is the dollar CDC date what has been assigned over here batch end date is currently populated as null. It will be later updated and modified based on the success and failure of the job and finally, the load date as the system date. Next, let us check the data flow implementation using some of the inbuilt transforms given in data services. First of all, we are using a query transform to perform a query on the source tables to populate our target dimension table. We have three source table customer, tier and address. We are performing a join. Let us check the from tab. We are performing a join of the customer table with the tier table based on the tier ID and that of with the address table based on the address ID. Next, since we are performing a change data extraction, in case any records which have been modified or inserted in the source master records, so based on that we are going to capture from the last day of execution till that day what was the last records e extracted we would like to extract the new records or the modified ones. So, in this case we have the where clause as where customer dot last updated date greater than equal to the dollar CDC date global variable or the address dot last updated date is greater than or equal to the dollar CDC date var global variable. Over here we have populated the full address as line 1, line 2, line 3 and we have populated the customer key which will be the dimensional surrogate key we have populated it as null next we have re renamed the customer id which is the source side surrogate uh, source side natural key 
and renamed the column name as source customer ID since we are going to compare it in the, our next transform which is the table comparison transform based on the column names. Next we have used uh, effective date from field and it is being set to the dollar date from global variable. The date 2 effective date 2 is set to the dollar date 2 to mark the effective end date of the record. The active flag is currently set to y and the load date of the dimensional record is set to global variable dollar sys date. That is for the query transform. Next let us go back and let us view the table comparison transform of data services. In this table comparison transform we are taking the table the our target uh, dimensional table of SCD type 2 which is the customer dimension. We are marking the customer key which is the surrogate key of the dimension table as the generated key column. We are using a cached comparison table. Next we want to compare the uh, compare the comparison table with the input source data set based on the source side natural key that is the source customer ID and active flag. Since the active flag we have set earlier to Y, so that is why we want to only make a comparison with those records coming in from the source with those records which are active in our target dimension table. Further we are going to compare based on two attributes, one is the status and one is the full address. So, any modification or changes within these two attributes we would definitely like to capture it or maintain it as history in our target dimension tables. So, after the after this transform we will get all the record set with the corresponding operation codes as insert and update accordingly. Next we are using a history preservation transform the inbuilt transform in data services to implement uh, SCD type 2. Over here we are configuring the uh, fields with the corresponding values and over here the valid from column is marked with the effective date from of our target table. The valid 2 is the effective date to column in our target table. For new record we want the validity end date to be dollar date 2 which we have set to a futuristic date 2050-12-31. Next we want to close any existing record if a new record comes in we want to close that with the system date. For current flag we are marking that we have a column in our dimension table which is called active and we are uh, using it to mark the current flag and the set value will be y. So, whenever a new record will be inserted it will be having a value y. Whenever an existing record is going to be modified it will be put to a value as n and the compare columns or the columns of interest or the attributes of interest are status and full address. Finally, for those records which new records that are coming in, we are using a key generation transform to generate the corresponding surrogate key for our dimension tables. So, over here the table name is customer dimension, generated key column is customer key which is the surrogate key and the increment value is 1. Finally, we are using our, our custom our dimension table which is of SCD2 and here are the important columns to maintain history or to capture the history which is the effective date from validity date, start and end date, the active flag to identify which record is currently active in the dimension table and the load date, the date when the record was loaded in the dimension table. Further in the options tab we have used a error handling methodology of using a overflow file in case of any rejections during database writing or database insertion or update, those records will be captured in our overflow file. Next, in case of any error of execution, we are using a catch block to capture all those exceptions and in execution errors. And in this script message, we want to first update the batch control table. We want to mark the newly created entry to a failure because the job did not run successfully. In that case, we are identifying the particular tuple based on batch name equal to customer dimension and the batch status was started. So, based on that, we are going to update the batch load control table and set the batch status as failed and the batch end date to the dollar CDC date. Next, we want to also mark the status of the job to failure. In that case, we are using a raise exception function call and uh, providing an error message of job failed. If everything goes smooth and fine, if there is no errors and exceptions, we are going to the final script. In the final script, first we are also going to check if there is any rejections, if any rows got rejected in our reject file. So, if the file size of the reject file is greater than 0, then obviously there were some records that has been rejected and in that case 
again we would like to update the batch load control table with the entry as failure or failed and we will also like to terminate make the job status as terminated uh, using the raise exception and we have provided the error message as job failed please check the reject file in case everything is fine we need to mark the or update the batch load control table so whenever everything runs file we will update the batch control table set the batch status to success and the batch end date is set to the system date so we need to provide it or we need to update the batch end date to the system date the date till which the extraction has been done so from the next day based on the last previous day of extraction the incremental or the change records will be extracted from the source tables this is the overall implementation of slowly changing dimension of type 2 with change data capture or incremental loading and using data services inbuilt transform like table comparison history generation and key generation transform thanks for watching this video for any details or any questions please visit dwbiconcepts.com thanks